Welcome back to Red Next Dirty Hands, I'm Pete. Today she's a miserable rainy day, so why not do a miserable job? That's right. <laughs> We're working on another dodge. Go figure. <laughs> That's right, this lovely 2005 Ram rammed its way into my driveway with a laundry list of issues and uh, that's right we're gonna be throwing mo parts at this Mopar <laughs> nobody likes to spend money on their trucks but there ain't no dodging this one. Oh yeah this thing did come in with a laundry list like I said you know there was multiple issues the power steering pump wasn't working the lower intermediate shaft u-joint was worn out on it right front caliper was seized lock solid burning up the brakes taking the rotor right down to the uh, rotor was getting so thin you could almost shave with it but uh, Still on the list is a very, very common problem. Any of you that own a Dodge uh, have probably come across this before. Exhaust manifold tick. When you start these things up cold, you get that t -t 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 -t. Then after a little bit, after it warms up, she goes away. Well, a lot of people think that it's, you know, oh, just a small exhaust leak or something like that. It's, it's a busted exhaust manifold studs that hold the manifold to the head. They pop the heads off and then you get a little bit of a gap in there and this thing develops a tick worse than that crazy ex-girlfriend. I hate doing these jobs. The manifolds are tight access. You know, anybody that has a Ford, you know, 5.4, you know, you know what I'm talking about. They're worse to do than these Dodge ones, but uh, the bolts in these things or the studs, whatever it is that bolts the manifold to that can be a bugger to get out. So, I mean, hey, we're getting rained on out here. It's a crappy day. It's a uh, get that turd into the shop and uh, see if we can find her now why am i working on all these dodges all of a sudden you know like this we're close to like oshawa it's like gm town you know like everybody used to drive gms around here but the last 15 years it's like that bleak shelton song this is dodge country people been kind of jumping ship getting away from the gms and buying you know those fords we won't talk about them you know a lot of people are driving dodges now i've even seen a few toyotas and nissans around here <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this thing is a pretty clean whip for the age of it and whatnot, but uh, I'll show you what I mean. Spark this suck up. I'm sure you'll be able to hear it. We got 247,000 kilometers on here. There you go, you hear that? Yeah, way up in there back of the manifold is where the bolts snap off. I'm pretty sure the other side's broken too. And you can hear this that little bit of puffing. So let's uh let's try to fix this sucker up. Give her some of the give her some rabbit and see if you can... Oh yeah. Nobody likes that sound. Freaking rainy day. How do we turn these in? Oh there we go. Alright. In the shop we go. We don't need the wipers no more. Oh, roll the window down. <laughs> I don't know how many times I brought a vehicle into the shop. You forget to roll the window down. <laughs> you slam the door or something and then she locks and it's like, ah, geez. So always roll the window down. Don't need to be locking the keys in there and then having to call the customer. Ah, where's the hood popper? There we go. Oh, oh yeah, lovely. Oh, and typical. Oh, the shocks don't freaking work. Jesus. These freaking hoods, the gas shocks on them don't seem to, <laughs> they never work right. You know, I don't know if it's because the hood's so heavy, it's got the grill attached to it or whatever, but sometimes if you get wild and crazy and pump it up, ah, let's give her, a, give her a good workout there. Sometimes you get lucky and it'll stay. <laughs> let's gamble. You know, you might be working away under there and all of a sudden be like a guillotine and choppy in half but uh, we'll clamp some vice grips on there just in case yeah, just take a little pair of vice grips and just clamp them on there just in case we don't need that dropping down while we're in there with our you know you could be just sitting here talking to somebody get your hand on there and uh, oh yeah do do how's it going jim and then all of a sudden that slams down and uh, yeah we ain't uh, working on trucks no more <laughs> christina might like it though <laughs> And yeah, looking down in here, like, you can't even see the exhaust manifolds from up here. This is the kind of job where you kind of really need the hoist kind of deal. And we, you know, we're going to lift it up and then we'll go from underneath and through the wheel well kind of deal. 
<laughs> These Dodges keep breaking down. They're like the Polaris of the truck world. Yeah. <laughs> Just junk. Oh, take it easy. Just joking. I'm pretty partial to the Dodges. I mean, there's the old boys, old original 01 uh, Ram 2500 diesel stick shift, too. Five speed. Nice one. I mean, I got my 57 Fargo, which is, you know, Canadian version of a Dodge. And I'm thinking of getting rid of my heavy Chevy and going to that, uh, look at that big, beautiful bitch. Hopefully I'll be getting working on that one, too, and turn that into my tow rig. Then, I mean, the Dodge engineers, they're nuttier than squirrel turds, man. Like, they make a production car that still uses a gas engine and is, like, a thousand horsepower. Oh, and honest to God, thousand horsepower, internal combustion, gas guzzling, tires smoking, North American-made hot rod, you know? Not some crappy electric shaver on wheels, you know? Like, pfft. I mean, we're fans of all brands, you know, even Fords, you know, <laughs> I cannot, they, you know, Fords have kept a lot of my buddies in business, you know, <laughs> I know a buddy that was able to buy a house just from fixing six liters. Okay, so we got to get this sucker up in the air. Oh yeah, she's up on the left, now it's going to be like a Friday night under the blankies with Christina, stark and dirty under here. <laughs> Wish it a little light on the situation, so, so yeah, I've already put a caliper and some rotors on here. And we've put a power steering pump on her. And then that U-joint there on that lower intermediate shaft for the steering. If that U-joint there was a sandwich, she'd be a sloppy joe. Because it is flopping all over the place. And I'm waiting on a new one. I phoned up Napa for that. You know, I normally get all my stuff from Napa. But their price on just that lower section with that U-joint. And it's only just that piece right there. $903. So, uh-huh. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. Outsource one from another supplier, so we just gotta wait a few time, a few days for that, that's all. So, I mean, while we're waiting, we're gonna tackle these manifolds, and you can see right there, this is the passenger side. That bolt is totally gone. I'm sure the one up top, you can't really see it up on that side of it. I'm sure it's probably busted off too. And then this side here, oh, you can actually see it. You can see the exhaust is being blown out past the port there on the head from the manifold. The bottom bolt's still there. Doesn't look, <laughs> doesn't look too healthy. Yeah, and there's the top one. The head of the bolt or stud, whatever it is, has snapped right off. And you can see all the exhaust being blown out around the port. So this side here is the side that's leaking for sure. So we'll tackle this side first to see how she goes. You know, these exhaust manifold jobs are always a pain in the nuts to do, especially anybody that has a Ford F-150 with the 5.4 in there. They were notorious for cracking the manifold. Like, my buddy Redford, I must have done it six times on his truck, but they're even worse because they got the strut tower that goes right beside the engine and the manifold there, and you get no room. At least with these Dodges, we got a bit of room to play, so uh, hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll have some luck getting these bolts out i don't know so first things first we got these there's two bolts holding the flanges together from the y pipe to the manifold so i'm probably just going to cut them in between and then uh, loosen them up because nothing's threaded into the manifold there so i mean you can try to get on there and undo them but i mean as crusty as they are you might as well if you got torches or you know, saws all, if you can get up in there, just cut them. So to make things a little bit easier to access in there, I'm gonna peel this wheel off and then I'll take this inner fender well out just so we can reach in. Gotta love this, uh, the Milwaukee M18 half inch drive impact gun. This thing is an absolute beast. I got this off my buddy Claude, just North Mac Tools. Uh, if you guys know him in the area or whatever, check it out. This is, they're a little bit expensive, but well worth it, man. I use this thing all the time instead of my air one now. And now we just gotta get in here and peel all these guys out. Looks like we got a couple of eight mil bolts or screws and Phillips. Shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, I mean, for the smaller bolts and trim work and stuff, I like using my little DeWalt, uh, the little driver thing, just clip a little quarter inch Adapter in there, put your sockets on, and go down. So far, I mean, this thing's coming apart not too bad. 
So we got all the little bolts holding it to the fender and up in the well there. So now we just gotta pop out. This speed sensor's just clipped in there. Get it out of the fender well. Just like so. Tickety boo. Oh, look at that. Like and now with the wheel and that fender well removed, you can totally see the whole manifold. We can get at those bolts there to cut them. Uh, hopefully, you know, we got better access now so we can use a little bit of heat with the torches and stuff to try and crack all these so we don't end up snapping any of these guys here. But you can totally see that U-joint now. Like, look how rusty that is. And I wonder if I can see the show you the slop here. This is how sloppy this joint is here. Like that is no good that equates to quite a bit of play on the steering wheel so that's a definite must fix now what makes this shaft worth 900 dollars? i got no freaking idea i don't think it's made of <laughs> gold or anything like that but apparently according to napa it is jeez 903 dollars i think that's my price too i'm not sure so one of the major problems of doing these exhaust manifolds is these bolts like <laughs> Look at it. That doesn't even look like a nut anymore. So they're all corroded. Everything's missing. Like those are supposed to be 10 mil heads there. But if I grab, like I got a decent 10 mil socket here. Put it on there. And it is looser than loose on there. So a lot of the times, what a lot of guys will do is just cut the heads off. Torch them off or whatever. So you can pull the manifold off and you still got the stud left there. And you can go at it with a stud extractor and try and pull them out that way. Or, before you even put a socket on there and try it and end up rounding it off, you know, go at it first with one of these twist sockets there, the twist bites, you know. There's still enough material on there that it kind of, I don't know, let's see. It'll kind of get on there. We can pound her on a little bit more and then see if it'll bite and turn her, you know. We might have to put some meat to it too, though. Uh, so, we got our little knockometer and give that a few tippy taps. Oh, where did that go? I heard it hit the floor. It's the worst when you drop something and she don't hit the floor and then you gotta rummage through the belly of the beast looking for the damn thing, but let's just see what kind of bite this thing does on there. Okay, it's biting pretty good. Yeah, I got it kind of pounded on to the next one down the line here just to see. Oh, yeah, they are. They're tight. She's biting on there pretty good. So I think we can try and hit the manifold with a bit of heat and we'll see if we can get them off of there. Like, and I mean, this thing's got over 240,000 kilometers and like that bolt looks like it is part of the manifold. Like there's no separation there. So that's how rusted these things are. So they can be a bear to get out. So I'm gonna go ahead, fire up the torch. I'm gonna. I'm going to nip the ends of these fellas off because they're already, they're corroded. I ain't going to get any sockets or nothing on there. So I'll snip them off and then make sure when you're using torches, you get like a little squirt bottle or something. I always kind of just spray the surrounding areas, just get some water on everything. So when you get your sparks and everything flying, they don't set anything kind of on fire immediately anyway. And then we'll keep that sucker close. We'll just hang it right beside us. So if we need it, it's right there. Gonna come in here. Down. Down. Make sure we got nothing on fire. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can crack any of these suckers loose. Cracked loose, but she don't feel good, that's for sure. Well, there's no denying it. Uh, they are not going to come out. I just tried. That's one from the bottom side, and that's how rusty they are and how thin. Like, it took no force just to snap this off. So, I say we're going to have to just torch the heads off of all those so we can pull the manifold out of there, and then we're going to have to deal with all these studs after the fact. And we'll turn them back now, boys.
Okay, I think I got them all torched off there, so give her a little tappy do. Get some of that rust and the crud out of there. I don't want to put too much heat to it. And then we'll give her a wiggle. That sucker is on there. Holy jeez. The problem with this front one here is that's an open channel, and this thing is so full of rust. It goes the whole length of the stud all the way through the manifold. So this bolt is seized on both sides. So I gotta try and chip this stuff out of here so we can bust it free. Oh, nothing's ever easy. This is ridiculous. This is what, you know, Totally causes all the problems for mechanics and stuff like that. You're trying, you think a job's gonna go easy and then you run into crap like this. I got her free now, I think. There she comes. Okay, oh my god. There we go. Now, of course, it's gonna be hotter than Christina to touch, so. Keep your hands away from there. Come on, you dirty dog. Oh. All right. Well, it's off of there, but you can see like how thin that stud is there. Like trying to crack that loose, it's just gonna snap anyway. So you might as well cut the heads of them off. At least that way you kinda you know it ain't gonna break off flush in the head, so at least this way we can kinda heat these up a little bit, get a stud puller on there, and hopefully have a chance of just pulling them out without wrecking the threads in the head, so. Okay, then we gotta pull the gasket out of there. Come on. Like, does everything have to be a fight with this thing? Ah! Oh my God, get the heck out of here. Okay, so I mean, we do have all these studs that we can work with to try and, you know, put a stud extractor on or pull them out. I'm probably going to because, you know, we're sucks. There is one right there busted off flush with the cylinder head. So I'm gonna have to try and either drill and extract that or I think I'm gonna grind, polish up the end of that. I'm gonna weld a nut onto it and see if I can extract it that way. So I think I'll go ahead and clean up the ends of the rest of the studs and then I'll weld nuts to all of them and then we'll see if we can get them all out that way. All right, I got them all tacked on there. Now it's like I'm following a bagpiper up a ladder. <laughs> all I can see is nuts. <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> let's try and crack them loose. So I went through, uh, ran the torch around the base of these guys. So let's, uh, fingers crossed, hopefully these come undone. Oh, it's moving. Oh, oh, that right there, <laughs> aside from Christina, that's the, one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Look at that. Hopefully, they all come out like this. Can even spin it out by hand the rest of the way. Oh, geez, they go in there pretty far. Boom, shakalaka. That's what we want to see. That right there, that's a nice one. Let's see if number two. Oh, come on. Get on. What in the. Oh, I got a piece of welding splatter on there. Uh oh. Hold on. I done messed up and I got a little bit of welding wire stuck onto there, so I can't really get the socket on. So. 
say so long to that sucker. Have that a couple of those. Oh, they're snug. Oh. oh, give it a little bit of back and forth action here. This one's a little tight, but she's moving. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. All right, well, so far we're in the clear and almost ready for a beer. They, uh, they're all coming out, uh, so I've left that one back there. That's the one that was broke off flush. Uh, so aside from that front one that was really thin, that's the one I'm really the most concerned about uh, if I can get it out or not, because uh, those ones that are broke off flush can be a little bit tricky sometimes. And I ended up, because it was broke off flush, I had to weld a tiny little washer to it first, and then I welded the nut to the washer. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that sucker backs out of there. So I heated up all the way around it with the torch. <sighs> And it is moving. Now, it seems like it's moving a bit easy. I don't know. Maybe the weld's breaking. I got a little bit of weld off the side of the nut there, so my socket doesn't fit on it 100%, but it's enough to grab. I think it's coming out. Please be coming. It is coming out. Oh my God. I can't believe it. Thank you, baby Jesus. <laughs> Would you look at that? Like, just look at it. It's coming out. That is amazing. And that one there, you can see, like, I just kind of blob welded a washer on there and then filled up <laughs> a little bit up to the side, whatever. But, I mean, it held enough to uh, extract that fella. So, throw it on there with the rest of them. Nice one. Now we just got to get in there, clean up all the ports on the head there, and uh, clean up the exhaust manifold, and then we should be good to go once Napa gets here with the new hardware and gasket. And I know I showed it before, but to clean up these uh, ports on the head, because it's an aluminum head, you don't want to go at it with like a, you know, an aggressive grinding disc or whatever. I've got this uh, green uh, plastic finger paddle thing. I got that off a of Snap-on Joe. And uh, yeah, it works great. Doesn't take any of the material away and just kind of polishes her up. Oh, put your safety glasses on, you ding dong. <laughs> Always got to remember to wear your safety glasses. I've been to the emergency room like four times getting metal dug out of my eyeballs. You know, if you go into the hospital with something in your eye, you get removed right to the front of the line. They treat it like a heart attack. It's pretty serious. So, you know, but you do want to avoid that, you know, put your safety glasses on. And just like so, tickety-boo, that one there is nice and shiny clean. We just got to do that to the other three, and then same thing on the manifold. That right there, dirty. That one, beautiful, clean. Blind man would love to see that. And now I got the uh, manifold cleaned up a little bit, so now we just got to wait for the Napa man. I mean, ha, there is nothing better than getting your hands dirty. Ha, ha. All right, so the Napa man just showed up with our new Felpro gaskets in there. We just got to... open these gaskets here they're the metal reinforced ones they got that little bit of a coating on there and uh, should be good to go with that and then we got a kit of Dorman uh, exhaust manifold hardware yeah let's throw this stuff back on there all right so before we throw it on there I like to use this permatex the ultra copper that's the high heat stuff always good for exhaust manifolds and all that so I like to put a little bit of that on there we'll smooth her out just to ensure we don't have any leaks when this is all said and done. Let's give her a nice little smoothy smooth. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you like it like that. Oh. And then the same thing up here, a little dab will do ya. Just a little bit. And after we got that all smoothed out, I take a little dab on my finger. <laughs> Rubber on the inside of the Y pipe here, so when it seals on to the end of the manifold, we'll have a good seal there too. No leaks there. 
Perfect. We've got the manifold sitting up in there, and then we've got to, uh, how are we gonna stack this up? Okay, we gotta line the gasket up. So we'll get this lined up here. Get that one started. Just getting them started. Just to hold the manifold up in place. Got the longer ones that have the little stud end on it. They go to the outside corners. Then you got the shorter ones with just the 10 mil head. They go in the middle. And you want to make sure you get these all started by hand. Make sure they're threading in nice and straight. You don't want to cross thread them. We're having some good success here. We don't want to ruin it all by cross threading one of these bolts. They're all started. See if we can snake this guy in here. And just kind of snug up some of these bolts. Then we'll come in here and snug them down my hand. Oh yeah. Well, I got the manifold all bolted on, so now I got to get this guy back up here. Okay. Put these bolts in here. There. And we just gotta tighten these two guys down, and uh, we should be golden. Okay, so this top one's a little bit tight to get to. <laughs> I don't normally say this, but I got a little stubby here, so <laughs> we'll get in there and uh, crank this one tight anyway. When you're tightening these flanges too, you kind of want to do it a little bit even, so you don't get it all cockeyed. Just like so. All right, and just like that, tickety boo, the manifold is bolted on. We got the two flange bolts all tight and everything back there. We got the ultra copper in the gasket, so she's all sealed up. But before we go and put this uh, winter wheel well and the wheel back on and everything, I think we'll we'll let her down and uh, spark her up and just make sure we got no tick, 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 tick over here. Okay, my hands are freaking filthy, so <laughs> instead of washing them for the hundredth time today, we'll uh, just use a rag. Open up this door there. Grab a hold of this key. Ah. Oh. That right there. That's nice and quiet, baby. Ha <laughs> ha! Nice one. Good job, buddy. All right, she sounds mint. This side is nice and quiet. I can kind of hear a bit of a tick coming from the other manifold on the passenger side. But we're going to we're going to carry on with our lives and ignore that for now. Uh now would be a good time to do that lower shaft while we got the inner wheel well out. But I got no idea when that's showing up. It's going to be another week or two before I see it. So, you know what? I guess uh button her up and uh get her down and off the hoist. All right, hoist arms are out. Take her Vice grips off, see? Still hanging up there by itself. And then, uh, let's kick her. Uh, I guess I should wash my hands before I take her for a test drive. Ha! Wash my hands, take her for a test drive, and then it's beer time. It's calling my name. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a little bit better, so. I can actually touch the door handle and the key and everything now, so. Ugh. Let's, uh, grip her and rip her. Oh. Whisper quiet. Nobody. Nobody. Let's go. Oh yeah, that's how you break her in. Engine lights on though. <laughs> we never did look at that. Oh, 
All right, we made it back from a successful test ride, and uh, that thing is whisper quiet in there. Not bad. So, you know what that means. That's right, it's beer time. Well deserved beer break after that. Jeez, I've been waiting for this beer. Oh my God. Ah, nice one. Now uh, these jobs here, these are way better to do than the Fords, but uh, uh, studs on the exhaust manifolds, super common problem on these things. You know, the Fords, they're known for cracking the manifolds. The Dodges just spit the studs off. So, you know what, it's a bit of a bear to do. You know, if you're gonna do it, I recommend, you know, you know, if you have a hoist, a uh, welder and uh, some torches, whatnot, you know, kind of need that kind of those tools you know to get this done you know some guys will drill those uh, studs out if they broke off flush or whatever and try and easy out them i've never had any luck doing it that way i find it's better to weld a little nut on there or something like that you usually have better luck getting them out but i mean teach their own man i ain't the boss here you do it however you want well, you know it sounds a lot better you know it's a good looking truck i mean you know it's 2005 it's getting pretty old but i mean price of new trucks you know hundred thousand dollars for a new dodge uh yeah throwing a few hundred bucks here and there or whatever on an old one to keep her up and going why not you know who can afford to buy a new truck these days jeez but i mean as always thanks for tuning in i hope you found this video a little bit helpful useful you know if you got a dodge of your own that's going tick 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 every time you fire it up a lot of them a lot of people think that it's the valves or the lifters clicking and clacking on these things but it's nine times out of ten it's always those uh, exhaust manifolds just tiny little exhaust leak you know, and it goes away once it uh, warms up. That's a telltale sign of it. So uh, hopefully you found the video uh, helpful. You know, uh, if you did, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this video and, uh, you know, like it, share it uh, with your friends. And I want to thank everybody for uh, reaching out to the uh, Rednecks uh, Dirty Hands website, getting some stickers and stuff. So, you know what, we've made a few sales. Pretty cool. So keep rolling. Maybe one day I won't have to do my regular job. I can, you know, just do videos. You know, but I really do appreciate the support and all that and just buying the stickers. That's awesome. So, uh, you know what? As always, uh, thanks for tuning in. Take her easy. Cheers.